Hi, what's up? Welcome to the second part. Uh, please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings. You're gonna need that to get context, but yeah, look, I'm, I'm just out of my mind, exhausted with all of this sorrow. I am endured through a very hard life and I don't know when this is gonna end. I also don't know how it's gonna end. I'm torn between it being literally the end of the world and me facing martyrdom or somehow strangely a breakthrough. However, whatever happens for me, it's the shock is in how this is even my life. In the previous part, I was speaking about the fact that people have placed me in these shoes. They've put me in this position and have left me here to rot, suffocate and die. Precisely because they're attempting to put me in their lives. Or they want me to be like them. They want me to settle. And I ended the tail end of the last part was essentially me using analogies about personal hygiene and how it is that I guess it, it's it's kind of it's naive to imagine that you can grab someone that takes care of their bodies someone that thoroughly washes their hands with soap and everything and makes sure that the toilet is properly flushed and closed and that the bathroom is left clean after they do their business in there to go and grab a person like that and suddenly make them that that roommate you know that roommate that you're gonna find the feces all floating in the toilet with it yawning open when you walk in there trying to do your business and you gotta flush you gotta aerate you gotta wipe stuff down before you even use it and you gotta wash your hands first before you even use the bathroom like most people most people just sit down and then only after they're done with their business they wash their hands but when you have to first clean an environment in order to make sure that it is feasible for you to sit down on once you're done cleaning you don't even want your body touching your body with those hands so you wash your hands first before you pee when you know you know that roommate when you've got that kind of roommate that you got to keep on flushing the stools off and then people expect you to now stoop down to the level of that roommate where when people want you to become the person that leaves your floating fecal matter in a toilet for other people to see and flush when you become the person that leaves your period blood spots all over the toilet seat for somebody else to come and wipe down. When you're the person that leaves grime in the kitchen sink for somebody else to wipe down. The, the soup stain, the tomato stain, the turmeric stain. That you, you become the person that leaves that for somebody else to come and deal with. It's naive entirely to anticipate that a, a clean freak, a neat freak is going to one day be reduced to the, the person leaving their stools to float in a toilet for somebody else to flush. It's naive to think you can regress a person with good hygiene practices to one who is that slob. And as for the slobs, they always, you know, life is just unfair that way. So we thank the Lord that he's the one that recalibrates scales. It is written in God's word that he hates unjust scales. So that which is skew, the Lord is in the business of straightening. He is in the business of flattening it when it's all crooked. And the reason why the Lord has to justify an unjust earth is precisely because there is so much injustice. And so because of there being as much injustice, every so often there are pairings of people that just don't make sense. Cain and Abel is one of them. Where it is that the one is a hygiene freak and the other one could not care less. Everything is just a mess. And these people are paired in the same sibling pair. Or oh, these people are paired in like proper. You go and you, uh, you you get assigned a roommate at university by the school, and you live with a complete slob. And because it is what it is, you can't leave. Students would understand what I'm talking about. Students would understand because a lot of times you can't choose who you live with when you're a student. You would know how you get assigned corres, some chick. Yes, like it, man. You don't even know how they can sleep in their bed. It's always got spaghetti in it. It's always got like stains is weird. And you're the one like you, you would love to put tape down on the floor to demarcate yourself from this person. But it would be rude. Please don't step your grabby paws onto my side. But you share the same room. So you don't know where to look whenever their things are just there. You, you come back after two days having spent the weekend at your parents house. And there is moldy pasta or spaghetti just chilling there lomuntu has left it 
they've just been coming back in and out going to parties without dealing with that without throwing it away and because you don't want to have to deal with that stench you're the one that has to go and you know like you have to go you got the white tulla and then you don't bring it up you don't raise it you don't you you, you don't want to fight but this is who you're living with for this year all that you when you go to the school and complain they tell you uh, you're gonna have to wait until next year we might reassign you next year or maybe your roommate might might drop out or they might be i don't know like yeah but you just get like you're told this is who you live with and you're sharing the same living space and when you raise it they they get passive aggressive they argue with you they, they 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 feel as if though you treat them like they're worthless or nothing or they consider you to be a snob and there is nothing you can do their hair is all over the floor their oh goodness their footsteps like goodness when it rains it's even worse because they grab their wet dry mac and they just put it in a corner to get all stuffy with all the other laundry until when you walk into your room it smells like that wet clothing that has been stuffed in a corner you know what it's like you would know if you've ever had a roommate or if you've ever lived with someone that is a slob when you are a neat freak you would know the horrors of that the horrors of that people who just do not care for themselves and they always benefit it's literally like collateral damage mixed with collateral dam benefit they always benefit from the person that will deal with it because Ngambane Gaba, a little live-in domestic worker for my roommate, then to, to live in this dirt. It just works. It's easier for you to just wash those dishes. It's easier for you to just throw all that laundry in the washing machine. It's easier for you to aerate that room, to flush that toilet, to, you know, scrub down that period stain proper. It's just easier because you don't want to raise it over and over and over and over again because out of embarrassment this person is going to act in defensiveness and there will be beef there will be issues and there will be a lack of peace in this environment that is just the misfortune of the world that we live in it's unjust and every so often we get paired with people that are just utter rubbish and there is nothing we can do for now there is nothing we can do for now when they have when they have um assigned you a roommate at, at school you gotta deal for the rest of the year or let your parents rent you a flat where you're living by yourself somewhere else off campus because this is this this is what the school has done just take it in your stride this is what the school has done you gotta just take it for a whole year you just gotta take it for a whole year and when in order to deal with this person you then have to tiptoe around them walk around with like a hazmat suit so you don't have to inhale the stench the smells in this environment every time you tiptoe into the bathroom because you don't know what it's going to smell like or look like because the moon lona i can hygiene at all when you gotta live like that you feel like your life is over you want to go hang like right now you just want to die you just want to be erased from the face of the earth but fortunately thank god he is a justifier even though we live in an unjust world so he eventually does recalibrate those skills he eventually does fix it but he tells us we have to be long suffering we have to be patient it's among the fruit of the holy spirit everybody gotta work through some waters to get to where they need to get but it's clearly stipulated in the scriptures that a wicked and a slothful servant gets thrown into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth and in that place the smoke of their torment rises up forever and that there is no one in the kingdom of heaven that shall uh, that, that, that shall enter in that is lazy that is slothful it's written in the parables of the sower sorry in the parables and the scriptures that a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will overwhelm you like an armed man and scarcity like a bandit so essentially the poor the, 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 the wicked sorry the slothful do meet their day in court they lose everything eventually they fall apart they get unraveled because they won't lift a finger it's written in god's word that a wicked a, a, a slothful servant a slothful man puts his hand in his plate of food but it's too lazy to, it's too lazy to bring it up and eat he puts his hand in his plate of food but is too lazy to bring it up to eat it's also written in god's word that as a door turns on its hinges so does a lazy man turn on his bed a person that's always screeching like that on their bed and they're leaving you to clean their spaghetti stains on the floor they're gonna be frustrating to a point where in my particular case i sometimes feel like i want to die altogether just leave the earth like it's unfair i feel like it's just so unfair that i gotta live like this with these people who like 
good hygiene practices remember i'm using analogies this is a spiritual matter filthy people in the sense that they don't take care of their spirits they don't care about jesus they're not looking at him they're not trying to honor him they're not trying to walk straight and right now we have been clumped together in the same room it's written in god's word that the wheat will grow among the tares we've been clumped together in the same res we are living in the same uh, commune and there's nothing i can do no, but I'm studying for now. I'm using these all as analogies. I'm hoping that you're catching what I'm trying to say here. Salasonke, kangani. Because where you going to go, girl? Your mama can't afford to rent you a flat in Auckland Park where you're going to be living just by yourself. And Vitz is like right around the corner. You ain't got no such money. You got to just take what they give you. Deal. Kanakwating, that thing is like I said, for a whole year, maybe even the whole degree se season. Three years, Gaufela, you are sharing with this random buffoon. This is your life. Do you understand? It's your life. You can't even get along. You can't even like her. Because Oditsila, you are always just passive aggressive and you feel like you, you are going to blow your top. You're not going to make it. You're not going to get through the day. And like I said, you feel a sense of injustice. Like, this is so unfair. I did not sign up to be a domestic worker. I did not sign up, Mina, to go and clean up after I'm a pitted stains with cherry that does not care, Uguti. People should not be handling her blood unless they're doctors. Like, why in the world is this even my life? You will want to die. I promise you, you will want to die. But the Lord says that do not grow weary of doing good for in due season you will reap the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you do not give up. Hey, Batum, guys, they say if you don't give up and it's so hard not to because the devil loves to get to you with those small little things that add up until they're so big that you're gonna blow your top but the bible says that do not take matters into your own hands leave room for god's wrath and the lord makes it clear that lazy people just don't inherit anything on earth and even in eternity a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will overwhelm you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man and scarcity like a bandit you are going to end up poor when you don't work when you don't pick up after yourself when you don't build your spirit you are going to end up poor spiritually eternally i guess that means condemnation but here on earth it means actual money there is no way that you're gonna get very far like it's that basic when you can't lift a finger to wipe your own stains what then are you going to be as a mother dealing with children whose stains you gotta wipe when when you gotta share an environment with a person how in the world under heaven are they gonna deal with you how are they gonna deal this world is unjust it's skew it is crooked and it always pairs the wrong people together people that are trying to be on the straight and narrow with some pretty wicked folk and the sad thing about the wicked folk is in the duration in the season when they're in your presence there will be all this pressure for you to capitulate they will try to bring you down to their level they will try to take you down with them as they plunge as they plummet as they go into the abyss bazozama drag it down with and it is that attempt that is so excruciatingly painful to me right now it is that attempt to bring me down to the level of all over the show that are sprawled these unhygienic creeps that don't clean up after themselves that keep on going back to the drawing board using sorcery but it's healer the lord has put roll-on deodorant he has put freshener sprays he has put a, fr a clean change of clothes a new shirt new underwear the lord has put a new toothbrush and some toothpaste and some dental floss the lord has put combs and everything he has put grooming um, uh, tools like nail clippers and nail filers and everything for at their disposal to get themselves cleansed he has put all different kinds of doctors in front of them he has put a dentist there to deal with their cavities a dermatologist to deal with their acne he has brought uh, an optometrist to help them see because their eyes are closed he has brought all different kinds of professionals to help them along in their grooming journey he has he will charge his angels concerning you so you will not strike your foot against a stone the lord the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them there is like a whole grooming team outside of every single person's freaking stupid life okay and everybody keeps on rejecting these grooming teams except for those who embrace these grooming teams and when you embrace the grooming teams and the lord starts to go to work in cleaning your teeth cleaning your mouth cleaning your nose from all those calluses inside when the lord is out here removing all that extra thick like 
gathered tar in your teeth when he starts to scrape out that callousing thickening nasty stuff that you find in toenails when he starts to get rid of all that that's when these people be like who do you think you are carabo and they pass you shade they give you grief they try to bring you into the darkness you were in they're trying to bring back your ugly calloused nails they're trying to bring back your bad hair and your knots and your mats and your lice and your ticks they try to bring back all your diseases your halitosis they try to bring back your cavities they try to bring back your acne whatever the lord has cleared out of the way whatever the lord has given you to groom yourself and whatever team he has awarded you they're literally trying to fire it God is out here purifying some people, cleansing them, making them new, giving them fresh new white slippers to wear as they walk around in the house. And these people are trying to put some oros, orange juice, on your fluffy new white slippers. And it's like, you put oros on my slippers, God will give me new ones. And then he gives you new ones. And then this time it's tomato sauce. The next time it's wine. The next time it's spaghetti. The next time it's spinach. And the next time get my shots are all together coming from their mouths because they vomit vitriol in your grill they won't stop speaking smack at you and you gotta live with these people you gotta live with them you gotta live with people that keep on vomiting on your new shirt that you've changed out and every time you go and you cry and you want to throw in the towel god tells you do not grow weary of doing good for in due season you will reap the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you do not give up but then you ask him how many times must i keep changing my shirt the lord then says 70 times seven times and it's like how long like that's all that david could say in the scriptures in the psalms how long how long how long how long how long habakkuk complained how long jeremiah how long always just asking how long will the wicked thrive will they prosper they keep on muddying their sheets and now they're trying to muddy mine every time i try to flee from sexual sin they send me another pervert every time i try to flee from fornication they send me another temptation every time i try to flee for like god how when when is this gonna stop like it's just this is wrong it's just like why why won't you wake up like what is so comely what is so seemly what is so ornate shiny ostentatious attractive gleaming beaming what in the world under heaven is emanating all this glory out of being so pitch black what is so good about being so evil like i need to understand where is the glory in so much sabotage backstabbing witchcraft incendiary mistreatment of people that cannot afford to be mistreated more than they already are what what do you gain i need to understand is there real joy in that like y'all act as if though it is good to be in that space to be so freaking destructive like is it really i cannot see how there's any peace or happiness or joy in someone that is that incredibly destructive to their ecosystem and if at all you're actually smiling you cannot imagine it's you smiling on that day it's gotta be a demon because mankind is born inherently self-preserving and so when you're that destructive why do you not see that you need deliverance because you cannot possibly want that for the world and yourself you can't possibly want so much destruction for yourselves guys you cannot possibly be so at ease with that much striving like constant vitriols vomiting it in people's grill all this passive aggression and sometimes even just flat out aggression all of this beef in the room this thickness of the air that you can cut as with a knife the way there are so many tensions that cannot be a life you actually want you cannot be serious you literally cannot be serious but like people are just doing it so i guess we're living in a dystopian society of people having embraced a severity of sorrow and thought it's actually cool like to be that savage and not actually truly liked yet priding yourself in the fact that even though you don't like me you're stuck with me what the heck guys when you tell yourself that i know you don't like me but i ain't going nowhere never in my life have i ever been content happy at ease literally swinging on a hammock as if though i am chill in an environment where i wasn't wanted it always hurt to be rejected I never prided myself in dancing around the person that wants me to get out to be that level of a tick a pest and irritant to a person that would much rather not be with you or in your environment and you pride yourself in not going anywhere for real you pride yourself in just being that tick that pest that parasite that thing just gnawing away at some blood like a freaking mosquito you out here priding yourself in being the hookworm tapeworm a parasite 
and you are glad that somebody is 24 hours a day on edge in your presence because they would much rather not be around you that's what people in the occult end up being and i just don't understand how that is anything that brings any peace or joy when you're not wanted and you're still sitting around fattening yourself all sleek in a chair like you're on a throne like a king you are a despot on that day some kind of a sovereign that prides themselves in oppressing a people because you can ransom their loyalty with fear you imagine that you can just walk these streets cracking a whip and that's enough who in the world does not want to be genuinely loved ain't nobody nobody does not want to be genuinely loved guys because like i said in the very beginning of this video in my first part the lord created eve for adam because it is not good for man to be alone therefore the lord made a helper suitable that's the natural way in which we'd lied given that we are made in the image of God. Therefore, when you walk in a contra fashion, when you walk in the very opposite antagonistic fashion to that model, where you are in unified fellowship with your fellow man, happily so do you mutually agree you want each other around. When you walk in anything but that, you are demon possessed because the Lord never intended for human beings to strive with each other in hating being in each other's grill but taking it in their stride that that is what it is despotic running of people ruling them with an iron fist insisting on being there when they don't want you laughing when they tell you to go and sticking around anyway because you know that you are running with an iron fist you're ruling with a chief whip that whole thing inside people is demonic it's not of god it is not of you as a human being you are not born naturally in that state it is given you by entities you are made by demons to desire to be a despot to desire to terrorize a people that want nothing to do with you it's the stuff of rape having sex with a woman when she doesn't want you when you are not wanted naturally human beings should gravitate away from that ecosystem they automatically walk away from a space where they're not wanted because nobody wants to be rejected because it's not good for men to be alone and so therefore when you are forcing yourself into a space where you're not wanted you are obviously like i will say it again demon possessed tyranny is demonic possession oppression is demonic possession subterfuge is demonic possession megalomaniacalism is demonic possession tyrannical force ruling with an iron fist a police state demonic possession when people don't want you around but you're there anyway ain't nobody cool with that nobody truly inherently deep down inside is happy to not be wanted that much and so when they're running it anyway it is a spirit of pride and a demon in them that is priding themselves in the fact that i get to coerce people that want nothing to do with me i am that rapist of note i'm gonna get what i want even though that which i wanted from wants nothing to do with me all i know is that everywhere whenever i have felt like nobody wants me around or people don't want me around a friend is acting a fool she's passing me shade i have never forced it i've never insisted because it always hurts to insist on sticking around somewhere where you can tell you're not wanted it's it's not comfortable and so normal people walk away from a situation like that where there is no reciprocity they walk away they do everything in their power to try and get out and that's why i'm trying to leave my family that's why i'm trying to leave south africa where there is no reciprocity i try to go but sometimes people are forced to stick around because there's nowhere else that they can go in that instance you are subjugated to the tyranny of that coercion but when you can leave and you choose not to when you are priding yourself in a strife that you have caused when you've made people live on the edge of their seats and they're now scared because you're a despot you're cracking a whip you have occupied a town and you're not leaving you're a police state you are that rapist force that's taking women and having a field day with them when you are that war criminal it's only a matter of time when you get driven out then because that's what happens with demons seeing as that's the act of demon possessed people the only way out is for a demon like basically a deliverance session to happen there needs to be an exorcism and so if the demons leave so too will either the person leave or the person will repent but the behavior will certainly stop the behavior will certainly stop when people are running a show with an iron fist priding themselves in causing tyranny on the floor where people do not want them they are demon possessed so all of y'all that are all up in my grill trying to come into my life look i'm not even trying to negotiate for my life because you won't listen your demons are holding on to you just as indeed unwanted as they are they stick around anyway because they're singing that song we ain't going nowhere we ain't going nowhere they're not going yeah 
But I mean, the only reason why they feel like they ain't going nowhere is because you won't stop waving the magic wand, will you? You won't stop consulting these wicked sangomas of yours, you will you? You won't stop burning those candles trying to kill an innocent woman, won't you? You will not do what it takes for the demons that are sitting comfortably inside your body to get out. You're not giving them a hard time. You're not challenging them. You're telling them stay. And when then they stick around and they manifest more boldly in the environment that you are in, more so of a tyrant do you become then to everybody in that ecosystem. You coerce women. You want to marry them by force. You slap them kakorobela. You feel entitled. You tell yourself, I'm not leaving, even though a person keeps saying, get out, leave me alone. The devil is the one that frustrates people like that. Human beings don't inherently desire to be that thing. And so when they are, you are taken over. And if you don't want deliverance, then I guess let the Lord massacre you. If you want to keep all those demons you have swallowed, all those entities you have consumed for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, if you want to hold on to them because you don't want to let go of that which you've gained through them, you don't want to let go of your spells, your witchcraft, all the things that you have acquired through them, that's when the Lord is then going to basically extract you out of the equation, seeing as you love those entities. And when then he extracts you, those entities will have no other choice once your silver cord has been cut, but to leave. Because once a body dies, those demons have no use for it. They will then go into the pigs or some other human beings or they will roam around dry arid places and find somewhere else to chill but in your body they will not be so if at all you refuse to be delivered from demon possession that has induced you into a psychosis where you are a tyrant forcing people down their throats that is your agenda if you don't want to let go of your entities your entities are not going to just swim out just curse just curse and jfella is ideal god is not going to <laughs> allow me to describe like the lord is not going to allow for the exorcism or the casting out of demons out of a person that does not want to be delivered because demons inherently need you to accept that they're there they're not going to just stick around if you want them gone if in the name of christ you seek the lord's face for deliverance those entities will at some point have to go while it is difficult for some to get out because others come out only with fasting and prayer what is absolutely accurate is that if a person seeks out deliverance these entities will eventually go all of them with fasting and prayer sometimes without but go they will they however have no prerogative to get out just because a pastor a preacher a deliverance minister a, a lay saint said come out in the name of jesus i cannot just say come out of her in the name of christ when this person in question is holding on to them for dear life when you think they've given you power oomph strength might and splendor in these streets you will hold on to them and they will have no qualms with you helping them chill. But when a person is holding on to those entities, that's when it's the human being that gotta go. The human heart that is deceitful above all things that is desperately wicked. When it is holding on to invaders of their body, when they don't want to get clean, when they don't want to scrub their teeth, when they don't want to eradicate the halitosis by brushing their teeth, when they don't want to scrub the grime off their toes, the Lord is then going to basically burn the dirty thing, all of it, in fire, seeing as it doesn't want to come clean. Let's look at that story in the Word of God of what happens when you cast out devils out of somebody that has not actually sought out deliverance and that, has, that does not have the Holy Spirit. These entities travel around all over these streets in dry, arid places seeking lodging or whatever, find none, and then say, oh, I remember... I was very comfortable and cushy in Pinky's body once upon a time. And now it's all nice and clean in there. Seeing as I have nowhere to go, because that Christian decided to kick me out in the name of Jesus. She's gone now with all of her Holy Spirit oomph. So I bet if we went back to Pinky, she'll still be a, a vacuous hole that we can just lodge in. And so what they do is go right back inside Pinky, but no, they don't stop right there. They then bring seven spirits more wicked than them into Pinky also. So if there were seven of them, now there's 14. And so the state of Pinky is now worse than her state at first. The condition of Pinky is now worse off. I needed to find a charger. Pinky's condition is now worse off than when she started out at the deliverance session or whatever when you are a little witch full of psychosis and you go to a deliverance minister 
and you ask him to cast out demons and he succeeds in the name of Jesus to cast these demons out but you don't want the Holy Spirit you don't repent you don't keep your house clean these entities will come back at some point but they won't come back as was as the state prior to them leaving they will come back with seven spirits more wicked than them meaning that Pinky is going to be even more evil than she was before she's going to be worse if she was swearing this time around she's also going to be climbing up walls like an ant she will manifest more worthlessly and she will be more destructive than before she will develop new habits her personality will be completely changed and this time it's going to take a lot more work for the deliverance minister to cast all that stuff out so all of y'all that keep on trying to get delivered from what you can tell are heavy spirits in you but you keep on going back to witchcraft you keep on going back to fornication you keep on going back to your dark lives as the dog returns to its vomit or as the pig returns to the mire after it's been washed you are literally asking to have your demons after them getting extracted since you like going to all of these deliverance missions these deliverance roadshows to get stuff cast out of you you are begging to have seven spirits more wicked than they come back into your body so it is why the the wicked body of christ is not the body of christ you're not really saved but these randos that are always in churches that have been getting delivered get a rolling around on the floor apparently spirits getting taken out of them and all of these like deliverance sessions all over the country the reason why you're more evil today than you were even before you got delivered by whoever is because you never stopped darkness you just had somebody that was truly filled by the holy spirit tell your entities to go and they left because they can't say no to that man or that woman but you still had that canyon inside your body that is dead beat filthy open for them to come back and so they did and now you're more evil now you look at Garabo with irritation you're gnashing your teeth you're growling every time you see me you you feel churnings stirrings in you that are very unromantic that are very spiteful you are destructive you desire my <laughs> you desire my demise and you don't even realize that it is uncharacteristic of you in comparison to how you used to treat me if at all i've known you for a while you also don't realize that it's not characteristic of you in comparison to how you used to treat anyone at all your personalities change and you can't even see it your entire personalities change and you don't even know that that's happened you're just this dark filthy thing that wants the destruction of a person that you once loved and now you can't even take care of yourself now you can't even make a sound decision to stop doing certain things when certain habits are obviously destroying you you're just continuing you're just continuing habits that are actually actively destroying you you are continuing with them some of y'all are heavily involved in gambling others of y'all are heavily involved in alcohol use drug use others of y'all have got habits that you partake in like pornography things that you never used to do so yearningly like there, there was no pull that kept on coming inside you that led you to these things and now you can't drop them you literally cannot put down the bottle you can't put down the cigarettes you can't put down the drugs you can't put down the porn you can't put down the gambling you can't and it's like it never used to be like that like i told you they change entire personalities and give you brand spanking new habits brand spanking new habits and these habits are the seven spirits more wicked than they that came back into your body so there is absolutely no point in me trying to get certain people say delivered because deliverance is not the same as salvation you will feel a breath of fresh air for five minutes after those entities get taken out of you but two weeks later you'll be back to square one except then some you'll be rather back to square minus 21 because you'll have seven spirits more wicked than the previous ones so when all that filth is happening when all those gangrenous entities that are metastasizing in your body are in the climate of someone that keeps on cleaning after you do you seriously think the lord is going to continue to allow the frustration of his servant that keeps on cleaning up after a messy freak y'all are messy freaks many of you you are literally vomiting on my shoes every time i change them out and the lord sees i'm exhausted from continuing to polish them each new time he sees i'm tired of constantly having to put some laundry in the washing machine even though it was clean before i even wore it but you decided to go and step on it before i could even put it on the lord can see that i'm washing dishes too many times a day again analogy the lord can see that i'm busy wiping toilet seats and flushing people's stools way too many times a day stools that are not even mine the Lord sees that I'm sick and tired of scrubbing with took brushes and everything. Bathroom floors. The Lord can see that I am exhausted from constantly having to wipe toothpaste stains. Toothpaste stains.
from the mirror in the bathroom. The Lord can see that I'm sick and tired of having to wipe down kitchen counters from all of the tomato stains that are on there. The Lord can see that I am exasperated and I'm fainting from cleaning up after a slothful, messy, door turning on its hinges type roommate every day of my life. And he sees that it's causing me so much despair that I wanna die. And I feel lonely because why am I not encircled by other people who respect hygiene? Why do I not have around me a crown of hygienic people with whom I can live at peace? People that I can trust, I can open the bathroom door and not be met with some shock because of what I'm seeing on the toilet seat, in the toilet seat, in the shower, on the bathroom mirror, on the taps, liquebu foam of toothpaste that I can see that somebody upon spilling the foam in their mouth on their hands then went and closed the tap without rinsing it off. And so that somebody spit over there. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that when you walk into the bathroom, you hear gah. It like stares at you when you are hygienic. That's the kind of stuff that will really irritate you. Grime on the shower cap type thing like the shower top that you move around you can tell that it's like a soapy water it's like why didn't you just rinse it or why didn't you rinse your hands first before you handled that why can i not live with people that understand that is the way that we live around here or at least people that i can train when they've got bad habits a teachable spirit the lord will never ever despise that the kingdom of heaven belongs to, to children because they're teachable they're malleable they're pacifiable and so if a person is untrainable, if they're unteachable, if you can't teach them to close the toilet seat after they use it, if you can't teach them to always check after they flush the toilet that everything is gone, if you can't teach a person to wipe their toothpaste guebu from the sink, if you can't teach a person to wipe the mirror, if at all they're brushing their teeth and there is like, you know, a spray of your like saliva or whatever on the mirror, wipe it. If, if a person cannot be taught that, they cannot imagine that they're going to successfully be able to stay with a neat freak because the neat freak is going to move out. The neat freak is going to expunge the contract. The neat freak is going to cancel the lease. The neat freak is going to leave without a notice and you're going to have to take care of yourself. And it is when the neat freak is gone that all of a sudden these people without hygiene recognize how messy they are. But instead of repenting, they try to bring the neat freak back or they try to bring the neat freak down or they try to reduce the neat freak to the messy sloth that they are instead of realizing that it is an admirable feat to walk in to be a neat freak it is better to wipe your toothpaste stains when you are done using the basin it is better to flush the toilet all the time and check what's going on it is better to go in yourself with that brush and wipe all of your poop down it is better for you to wipe down the kitchen counter it's better for you to take out all the stains out of skirt body it is better for you to basically be neat so that you can understand the pleasures and the joys of being clean all the time so that you can understand the luxury of being the snobbish girl that's always got herself in a bunch. There is power and there are benefits to being the snob that everybody can't stand because you're always doing everything so perfectly. There is power to that because when you now today are walking in that snobbish disposition, now you see why under heaven the world is better because of people like you due to the fact that absent of people like you being around. The world literally falls apart into Gehenna, some dirty little joint. Nobody corrects anything. Nobody is putting down any toilet seats. Everybody is leaving stools just floating in a toilet because everybody's too spiteful to flush it themselves. Like, you know, that, that mindset in people, like walking in to a bathroom and then expecting that somebody else is going to flush the gunk that somebody else left there. Most people are like that when they're dealing with these messy freaks. I'm sorry, I'm not going to wipe anybody's period stain, so I'll use the next bathroom. I'm sorry, I'm not going to flush anybody's stool, so I'll use the next bathroom. So essentially they're expecting that's what it used to be the case at MTN, the cleaning stuff. One lady who was a cleaning staff walked into a stall and there was period blood all over inside a toilet. This chick did not flush and she closed it, went to her bosses and was like, I did not get hired to do this. And indeed the bosses agreed and it became a whole communique. Literally, they sent a communique in the building, in the company saying, y'all need to teach yourselves how to flush some toilets because the cleaning staff are not here to clean up after your vomit, your period, your poop, your this, your that. It was embarrassing, but it was a message that needed to be sent out there. Yeah. When you're expecting somebody else to do it, ultimately you will get humiliated in a communique at work. You're going to get humiliated. But there are people who the world imagines as cleaning stuff. If at all you don't flush the toilet that some freak did not flush, who is going to flush it? Who? 
Now imagine it not being an office bathroom where it is that you can move to another stall, but it's the one in your own house. It's the one in the commune that you're sharing with some fellow students at university. On that day, you cannot wait for another one of your roommates to go and flush it. You literally have to be the one to flush it yourself. And when you have to wear that level of maturity on a loop and it appears to just be lingering and lingering and lingering the amount of time that you're spending with this like person that is not getting their act together. You're going to feel exasperated and like nobody's coming through for you. You're going to feel alone in this world. You're going to feel like there's not, nobody is going to help you. You're going to feel despaired. That's what I'm getting at. Like you're at the end of yourself. You've reached the end of yourself. And that's where I find myself today with all this wickedness around me. And I keep on flushing people's toilets. I keep on wipe, wiping their bathroom mirrors. I keep on wiping down their kitchen counters. I keep on mopping their floors. I keep on cleaning up everything that they do to me. I stopped fasting because I was sick and tired of constantly fasting. I at some point got to imagine it is not healthy for me to keep fasting so much. But there was a time when I would fast for like a month. Stop fasting and then two weeks later I'd be back to fasting again for another month. Stop fasting for three days and then go back again for another month just to clean out the dirt. Just to clean out the demons that keep on getting sent to me. So I basically said one day to God, Father, I'm not, I'm not fasting again. I'm not fasting unless you tell me to because this this fasting is messing with my fitness it's messing with my hair growth i'm trying to grow hair and i'm trying to develop muscle and if i'm always fasting like this it's going to take forever and a day for me to get to where i need to get in terms of my body and my hair is going to grow slowly because i'm not getting all my nutrients in yeah so i basically went to god and said if this is going to kill me then let it kill me but i cannot live a life where i am fasting for practically most of the year i can't but that's the level of demonic attack I'm endured under. That's all the filth that, ke that keeps getting thrown at me. That's how many people dump stools in my toilet seat and don't flush it. That's how many people leave their water sprays of toothpaste on my mirror. That's how many times people leave their grubby soapy hands on my shower head. That's how many times people leave stains on my kitchen floor, stains on my counter because I got to share an environment with them. They watch my content, they see my suffering, they see my sorrow, they make an observation of what it is that I am going through and they think that they can just continue to drop, drop their stools in my backyard. And all throughout this time, all the, I keep saying the same thing over and over again. God has given you a clean robe. God has given you clean slippers. God has given you a fresh new br um, toothbrush with toothpaste. He's given you dental floss. The Lord has given you a mascara wand to neaten your eyelashes. God has given you a hairbrush. He's given you shampoo. God has given you a detangling brush. The Lord has also given you a personal dermatologist, optometrist. Uh, what is this? A dentist. The Lord has given you a personal oncologist to basically demetastasize your metastasizing cancer. The Lord has given you everything you need in order to live a life in godliness. Just go to him. Just go. He will fix your desire to destroy the earth because it's not human to think that way, to feel that way. You are like the devil right now. You're trying to exalt yourself above the stars of God and be like God. You you are literally walking in tandem with Satan, the, the prince of the power of the air who keeps on stealing, killing and destroying. You cannot be a despot and be content and at ease. There is no historical despot that's ever really truly been happy. They've been a sovereign. They've been powerful. They've been abusive. They've had um, psycho uh, uh, fans all over the show. They have had people that were willing to just gladly abide by what they were doing, but actually truly be joyful, happy. No, I'm sorry. That only comes in the fear of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. They've never been happy. Just feared. Just feared. Referent power is what makes a leader happy. In other words, when people are happy by influence to follow you. And so when you are that ridiculous sovereign and despot that everybody hates, do not pride yourself when you're kingdom is still running and thriving because you've got this military force that's iron fist ruling everybody in your town don't pride yourself in it because it's not human on the day god delivers you you're gonna cry over everybody that now hates you and doesn't understand you because you're now born again everybody that now can't stand you because in the run-up to your redemption oh saul on the road to damascus you were busy killing christians you were busy killing anybody at all that didn't agree with you you are going to be sad on the day when you realize that even those people that were allied to you were only doing so out of fear. They were your psycho fans. They were, they were not actually really truly glad to be at your beck and call. They just imagined it was a safer bet to run with you than, any, any, than everybody else because you were the bigger power at the moment. But actually love you. No. That's not really what's going on. That's not really what's going on. Nobody wants to be that thing. Not truly. Not deeply. Not in their human state only when they are demon possessed because it is not good for man to be alone 
and demons make mankind super alone and demons cause mankind to cause other of mankind to be super alone and i've been put in a situation to be alone for pretty much the rest of my days by people who are attempting to make me adore a despot they want me to lick the toes of a despot they want me to abide and worship a despot somebody that is literally trying to run me with an iron fist intimidate me with sorcery make me feel like nobody else is gonna love me it is torturous and it is exorbitantly punishing and that punishment i feel it i will not lie it makes me mournful i am grieving loss of love and support because i have got despotic people trying to force their agenda down my throat i cannot stand them but daily i keep on flushing their toilets and it is freaking disgusting every single day i keep on wiping their stains all over my proverbial house and it's disgusting i got away masks and gloves and as i'm cleaning i'm gagging but i'm cleaning anyway because it's the same living environment as mine i've been made to live with them and there appears to be nothing i can do and every day i keep cleaning up after them and i look at god and i'm like but this is unfair do you not see unequal scales they will never ever feel what it is like to want to leave and not be able and they will also never feel the benefit that i truly was in this environment given that i was always cleaning i was always cleaning i am always praying and i am always wiping away stains that keep getting spilled in my family's lives by dark disturbingly like wicked abhorrent men that keep throwing spells on my family and it's not just men but there's women too but it's he that like, they are filthy and they are trying to come into my life they are trying to force me to do what they do they want me to fornicate they want me to settle to have an affair to anything guys like the spells that keep getting thrown at me by these unhygienic creeps are disturbing to say the least there's just so many and some days are worse than others and today's one of the worst ones i am like afflicted in the worst way i am persecuted i am afflicted i am coerced and i am exhausted and all i can say to god is i'm tired and it's unfair why don't you just take me out of here so they can see that i was the only one cleaning because the moment the only neat freak in the room leaves the commune that they're sharing with messy roommates those messy roommates realize that all along the house was livable because one person made it that way they could not live in dirt and so they kept cleaning but she was the only one cleaning now now that she's gone look at the maggots gathered in that corner look at the flies in that corner look at the roaches in that corner look at the breadcrumb stains in that bed look at that look at that look at that look at this unflushed toilet look what does that smell what does that smell when she's gone you will suddenly pick up stenches that filthy people that don't want the hygiene offer have seen it fit to just leave to fester until it stank i've been seeking the lord's face to extract me here so that it can start to stink because the only way that these people very potentially might repent is if they're forced to suddenly clean now that the one who was cleaning is gone when a family just starts to fall apart when walls start to crack when foundations start to shake because one person has gone maybe some people might repent maybe some people might pray for some children maybe some people might pray for some husbands and wives and for some mothers and grandmothers maybe some people might pray for some communities Perhaps some people might repent. Perhaps some people might drop the magic wand. They might actually get down on their knees. They might fast. Maybe some people might seek out deliverance and actually gain the Holy Spirit that those entities don't come back seven spirits more wicked than they. Maybe some people might actually down tools. And what I need to do is not only leave my family, but South Africa. Because then maybe they might repent. Then maybe they might repent. Because right now, I promise you, I feel like I'm the only person cleaning this house. I feel like I'm the only person cleaning this country. I feel isolated in my barrenness of sorrow looking at the filth of everybody around and i am stranded in a country i cannot leave and it is so dirty and i cannot just leave it like that while i am here i feel like i'm the only one and the same thing is true with my family i'm the only person that's doing anything of value in christ here 
I'm the only person trying to keep this place in a neat bunch. I'm the only person praying of darkness that keeps on slapping me because of the position they've left me in. All these men that afflict me with their rape spells, their gorobella, they are trying at me because my family is like this. And every time they drop a bomb on me, I get persecuted by my family and I gotta be the one to pray and pray until it stops. I am the only one cleaning. Everybody else is just gliding in this filth and I wanna go. I want to leave. I'm gonna be one of those freaks now that don't have family, but they deserve to lose me. And so too does South Africa deserve to lose me. I need to go, but I don't know how or when. I do not know when I'm gonna get out of this, but one thing I know is that this is not gonna end well. Not for this country, not for these unhygienic freaks, and not for me. This cannot end well. I like I just I do not know what's gonna happen, but I'm exhausted. I am tired. I am tired. I am tired and these people cannot afford to lose me. They can't afford for me to disappear from here. They cannot afford for me to stop cleaning because they are going to bear the consequences of living in a filthy house that is basically teeming at the folds with all manner and kinds of bugs. Bugs, dintinsi, maggots, cockroaches, whatever it is that can crawl in an environment that is dirty and unkept. They are going to know what under heaven we as the body of Christ did. To restrain the darkness around. It appears there's not enough of us. Is this the end of the world? I do not know. I don't know. But all I know is that if it is, I guess the rapture is what needs to happen. But if it's not, I guess to leave South Africa. I have to leave this country. I have to leave my family. But if I leave, I will be one of those. Then she has no family. She has no friends. Like she has no one. But I would rather live all by myself. Then live among people that I have to keep on flushing the toilets off. Live among the people that I have to keep on... I can't. It's causing me despair and it's making me feel like I'm stranded in this loop of psychosis indefinitely. I'm not gonna get out of here. I cannot keep on cleaning up people's period stains, proverbial. I literally cannot keep doing that. But that's what I do. I'm literally a freaking janitor in the spirit and I cannot deal. I cannot deal. I keep cleaning up after filth. I do not know why they don't realize that this is not sustainable. Look at the country. It's so freaking dystopian. I don't know why they're not stopping. You cannot keep this up. It's not the way it's supposed to be. But then again, when the God of this world has blinded you, you're not even going to see where I'm coming from. You'll just think I'm some snob and different that keeps on speaking smack about people that don't deserve to be spoken about like that. They will keep on helping one another's cause along. They have no idea that this country is being held together by the sticky tape of one or two or five or ten Christians. Just five of us are holding an entire country down. And they don't realize that as soon as we go, from their corners, Roaches, ants, rats, anything that can fester in a house that's unkept. They're all going to come out. And the tenement of prover or the equivalent of that are demons, entities. It's going to get run over. We are holding this country together with sticky freaking tape. It's not sustainable for one person. Two, three, five, ten thousand, a million. It's not enough. There aren't enough of us to deal with all of the weight of your sorcery as a country. Your wickedness, your coercion, your despotic disposition, your insistence. I'm putting people in like environments that they don't belong in. That's how I'm tunneling. There is only one way out when you are treated like that, guys. Literally only one way. And it's not comfortable when you live in a world. It is isolation. It is solitude. It is separation. Be ye separate. Be ye holy for I am holy. Come out from her, my people, lest you should partake in her plagues. There is only one way out. It's accepting that which God said is not good. Loneliness. You have to take it in your stride. That's what's going to happen in the last days. People are going to be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, slanderers, despisers of those who do good, having a form of lo lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, have nothing to do with such people. They will worm their way into the lives of weak-willed women seeking to burden them with passions like Janice and Jambres. Go read 2 Timothy 3. It's going to be bad. You're going to be made like Micaiah, put in prison and then fed meager portions, of, meager portions of bread and water. They are going to ostracize you, marginalize you, treat you like you're trash because you won't partake in sorcery. You won't get your, your garments muddy. You won't fornicate. You won't uh, partake in their stupid gossips, their malices, their slander. You will not partake in the things that they do in order to basically push their agenda along. You will not be prepared to be a saboteur of other people's lives, to take other people's prosperity in order to go and boost your own. You don't want to do any such thing. You want to hold on to God because you know that the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl, that a merchant goes and sells everything that he has in order to acquire it. This pearl of great price that you have in your possession has made you be able 
to basically sit out all of this marginalization because it's not going to do anything for you to capitulate blessed is the man according to psalm 1 that walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night he's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither and in all that he does he prospers but the wicked are not so they're like the chaff driven away by the wind therefore the wicked will not be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous they will not be able to stand among the godly or something nor sinners stand in the congregation of the righteous the way of the wicked will perish but the way of the righteous will endure forever that's what someone says someone basically says be ye separate be ye separate and it would it was easier uh, you know just after the P protestant reformation to be separate because those from whom you were separating yourselves might have been large in number but you still had a big fat thriving growing church there was a body of christ that was be sprouting everywhere in these streets so you had home fellowship you had sisters and brothers and churches that were actually truly born again but we are at the tail end of the ages where the great apostasy has happened and a lot of people who say lord lord are not really of god they will not enter the kingdom of heaven they are using witchcraft next to their christian walk they are spiteful full of malice slander arrogant boastful proud they are saboteurs they're malicious they're violent they're full of fornication they there's like they are just not separate they look like the world they talk like the world if it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck then yo it's a duck they're in the world in the worst way they love the world the things of the world the boastful proud of life the proud of the flesh the proud of the eyes and these things are not of the father but of the world and so they will perish and they are besotted with them they have not tested to see if they're in the faith they keep on they don't test they don't lift the toilet seat after flushing to see if there's anything left in there that they might leave a clean toilet to be used by the next person that needs it that's what's good it's just a gross this but like a whole gross conglomerate of people that are deceiving themselves thinking that they're saved when they're hellbound they they do not endure sound doctrine and having itching ears they have gathered for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what the itching ears want to hear health wealth and prosperity they've been told that they that that the evidence of their salvation is the fact that god has given them everything that they've ever wanted when god had nothing to do with it because after all you did use witchcraft to push your agenda along you were a microwave baby instant gratification we're not prepared to wait for what it is that you would get ultimately from god and then you claim that whatever gift you got was from god when it is not from the lord because it came from the account every good and perfect gift is from the lord and from the father of heavenly lights they make up the majority of those who call themselves christians because that's what that would be the case in point at the very tail end of the ages where there would be a great falling away people taking heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons they, that, that's what they would be doing and so because in their masses they'd be that way they would also be very unloving because by this man will know that you're my disciples love one another but those who call themselves disciples will not really be disciples and so they will not be able to love the true body of christ and so they will increase in lawlessness against god despite claiming themselves to be god betray one another hate one another throw one another to the dogs and so because of an increase in that lawlessness their love will also grow cold and the remnant will be subjugated to the tyranny of thinking they've got a friend a brother a sister a fellow holy priesthood and, ro and holy nation royal priesthood and holy nation and then they will be slapped by surprise shock attacks in the i'm single at 39 and there's only two men that i have seriously considered being with ever since coming to christ and both of them reeled me in with corobella i would never have listened to them if they were not speaking christianese and lots of it if they were not speaking christian speak if, if they did not have the words of god on their lips but then again these people praise me with their lips but their hearts are far from me both men were heavily involved in the occult and i fell in love with both of them i did it was genuine love because i thought they were my brothers only for me to learn that i am being pulled Gango, kadichar that's what under heaven it is that women in the church are subjugated to the tyranny of i would likely go so far as to say even men they meet women we are trying to be in love get married and yet we can't find our isaacs as rebecca's and vice versa we can't find our sarah's as abraham's etc and vice versa we cannot find our boaz's as ruth etc because we are being manipulated spiritually to look at men that aren't ours and look at women and the men looking at women that aren't theirs and think that they are the ones when they are jezebel this country that tolerates that woman jezebel because she calls herself a prophetess women that are not of god and yet they're being taken seriously by men that are supposed to be godly above those who belong to jesus and it's just a mess it's cantankerous it's chaotic it's causing divorce amidst christians it's causing discord in marriages so much striving a lack 
of, of, of peace, lots of misery because of the apostasy, the great one that is now facing all of us. That is what is happening. And so God, I was still single at 39 because now I am so freaking on God. I'm just looking everywhere I go. My whole YouTube channel is frozen. Like, like there's so much witchcraft operating around my life. It is so excruciating to make the observation of it that I can't even get looked at by anybody at all that makes Christian sense. And I'm like, where are all the Christians? Where are all the Christians, the real ones? Not these charlatans that are mixing God with other stuff. But it's Hila. The ones that are leaving their stools, floating around in a toilet for somebody else to go and flush. Where are the Christians instead of these charlatans that are making us live in houses with dirty people that aren't of God, but they are inside the house of God. But the Lord did say that he will allow the wheat to grow among the tares and then he will harvest the wheat and they will discover these tares that they were lost all along. Let it be the rapture, let it be the tribulation, whatever comes, let it come. But right now, I've got very little hope for humanity, very little. I just want to leave. I've been left without a family for crying out loud. I've been left without friends. I've been made destitute. I've been left without a country. I am just this floating alien on earth with no citizenship anywhere because even my own country has spat me out and yet it calls itself a Christian nation. That's how dirty houses are. And that's how only one or two people are cleaning these streets. And these one or two people are so severely mistreated. Everybody's expecting them to downgrade to the status of sloth, twisting around in a bed and like a door turns on its hinges because they've been made slothful. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will overwhelm you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. They expect us to chill just like them in darkness. When the Lord said, wait on me, I will come and speedily. But these people are like the wicked servant that is beating up all the other servants because the master is tarrying. They're persecuting the body of Christ, calling themselves Christians. They're forcing women down their throats, like no man's business. They're mixing Christianity with all different kinds of nasty stuff out here in these streets. And believers are beleaguered on all sides. And saying we can't breathe. We literally cannot breathe. It is toxic. The air has got some strange gas in it. And even our hazmat suits are being pierced into by this toxic gas. It's about time we get extracted. Like the rapture needs to happen, you know. Like I, there is just no earth left. There's nothing left, Lana. How in the world did this country become like this? I don't understand. Khuditila. It's so dirty. It is so dirty. It is so filthy everywhere. And I cannot even find a single Christian in sight. Every last person that I have a conversation with thinking they're believers. There was a chick in South Africa that I met that did that to me. She called herself a Christian and we fellowshiped briefly. And I'm like, God, do they, does any, but is there anyone out there? Are there any Christians left in this country? I, I like, is there anyone left that is still out here flushing other people's stools? Because I feel like I'm the only one. But then again, like I said, the only way out of this is to be separate. It, God is, did not intend for us to be alone, but unfortunately in the last days we are going to be alone. We are going to be alone because wicked shepherds will scatter the sheep, but it's going to be God himself that's going to gather the one that's lost out there. It's unfortunate. We're not supposed to be alone, but we're going to be alone because it's the great apostasy. There is only one way out, guys. It is to separate yourself and loneliness hurts. But you have to remember in the word of God what he said. He told us in advance that these things would happen. And so when they do, do not imagine that the Lord has forsaken you. All that it means is that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. Things are not falling apart. They're falling into place. Our loneliness in these last days, our scattered nature, nature as sheep with no shepherds, our isolation and our mistreatment and our being put together with tares that keep on increasing in number in comparison to the wheat, it is an end times prophecy fulfillment. Do not give in. Don't throw in the towel. Just like I'm literally trying to give up and throw in the towel. In and of myself, I'm sad and I'm scared. And in and of myself, I feel like whenever, when am I ever going to get out of being mixed with these tears? Like I need to get out because they don't even want redemption. They don't want to get clean. They don't want to wash their robes. They do not want to take a shower when God has given them a clean bathroom. They just don't want to do anything of that nature. And there's nothing I can do to force them. You can take a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. There's nothing we can do. All I can do is just wait. But one thing that is absolutely unacceptable is to capitulate. Be ye separate. That's the only thing. Be ye holy for he is holy. And the Lord will see it fit to give you Eve or Adam given your gender. And then you will say this at last is bone of my bone. You will say it ultimately. The Lord will restore you to things that you need. Whatever the locust, the palmer worm, the canker worm has not a way at. Jesus will restore it. You have to trust that. That's in the book of Joel too. Like you need to trust that the Lord will restore to you that which you need. But you cannot take in your stride some wicked man or some wicked woman. And you cannot imagine that God is going to leave you in an ecosystem where rotting flesh continues to gnaw away at you. Where rotting flesh continues to creep up your bed, your skirt. Where rotting flesh continues to try and muddy you. Understand the Lord is not going to leave you in that environment much longer. Because he knows that 
we are made of dust and so he has compassion on us he knows how much we can take he will not suffer us beyond that which we are able to take in our stride so ultimately there's no way that i'm not getting extracted out of here guys one way or another rapture death martyrdom or relocation something is gonna give because i cannot stay here that much is a given deal not in this family and not in south africa i cannot stay i literally cannot stay otherwise i would not be saved if the Lord does not cut the days of our sorrow short, no flesh would be saved. I would not survive if I am not quickly extracted out of here. There is too much evil everywhere. But like I said, be separate. It's the only way out. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Bye.